Hey everybody, it's Nick. Uh, for this tutorial, I got a uh, sky dome that we started with in another script. But now I've added the ability to swipe with your finger to uh, change what the scene uh, looks like. You can see the sky dome here, and then I'll swipe. And now we're in another scene uh, generated by another texture. I've also increased the uh, exposure value by adding in um, an emissive texture. And I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So you can see I've got uh, three textures here in that video and that's it okay so now we're in unity and so I talk about how the script works this is this is uh, a very basic script uh, it's already cal it's already set up for AR package managers are installed you can you can look at that in, in another video basically you need to have AR foundation and AR kit um, I'm I'm like deploying for iOS but most of this will work for uh, Android too I have an error session origin, error session. I created a game object, just an empty game object called gesture detector. And in that I've placed the gesture detector script. And then under our error session origin, I placed the sky dome texture swap script. So those are the two things that do like most of the work. The gesture detector script I've talked about in another video, but just to open it up really quick in uh, Visual Studio, uh, we're looking at just a really basic gesture detector. The most important thing here is this variable called swipe detected. That tells us whether or not there's a swipe uh, from the user. It is a static variable, which means that it, it, is, it is accessible to other scripts within the file. Um, otherwise, it would only be detectable within the script. And that's not very useful. Uh, so we look for uh, every frame, we look to see if the users touch the screen. And if they have, we look at where they started touching it and where they stopped touching it. And if there's a difference, we call that a swipe. It's very basic, very simple. Uh, it'll, det it'll detect left or right, uh, right to left, up and down, down to up. Any kind of swipe is considered a swipe. It's very simple, very dumb, uh, but it works. If you go into the sky, texture, don't, uh, sky Dome Texture Swap script, this is where most of the work happens. So, okay, so when we have a serialized field, that means that we can place uh, different prefabs or different objects into the script via Unity. It makes it very simple to change the script. So if you go back to the session origin where I've taken the script and placed it in here, you can see that the Sky Dome is actually is actually the prefab uh, Sky Dome. And this is from the import from the other script. Okay. And then the textures are coming in from, from the textures folder. And we'll talk about that later. But that's basically, so we plug those variables in, and now they become part of the script. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we do when the script starts is we instantiate the sky dome, and we call it my we call it sky dome in scene. And that's just so that we can we can reference it within the script. The, this is just the prefab that gets passed to the uh, to the game object. Very important. It's otherwise the scripts don't work right. So we create sky dome and scene, and then we quickly transform it. We make it six times bigger. So just a vector six, six, six. This F stands for float, and it just helps things along. So it's a we're making it six times larger than it is. That, in my uh, experience, makes it large enough so that you don't accidentally move yourself outside of it while you're sitting in a chair. We go to the sky dome, uh, and then we're going to change the material to the first texture that's in the uh, that's in the texture array. Then we're going to adjust. Uh, we're going to create like an emissive effect. And I found that like when you're inside a space, especially in a darkened room, or just even just inside in general, the textures come out too dark. If you really were outside, it'd be a little bit exposed or even overexposed. And so what we do is we're just creating an, an, an like emissive color that's uh, almost almost not that bright. And then we're going to apply that to the emission color. And then we're going to turn on the emission effect with this keyword. And then we apply the same texture that we've got here to be an emission map. And that's gonna create variable emission based on color and, uh, and based on brightness from that texture. All that is to say, it looks like it's sunlit, or at least outside, in a way that it doesn't if you don't have this emissive stuff. Okay, then the magic happens. So you can, at this point, you, it, this just creates a sky dome. You can move around with your phone. It looks It looks realistic. Now we have the update function, which is looking for a gesture. And so basically it says, if we have a gesture, right, swipe detected, true, then change the texture 
uh, to the next texture in the array, right? Which is right now it's, it's, it starts off as, as, as texture one. So this is zero. The next one's one. And then it's going to change the emission map to that texture as well. And then it's going to increment the count. So the next time we gesture, that count's going to be two. Okay. Then we set gesture back to false. There's no gesture anymore. So we keep running it. We look around. If we change it again, it's going to run through this. If we detected a swipe, we're going to replace the texture. We're going to increment the count and so on. Except for if we increment the count and the count ends up being larger than the number of textures that we have in the array. So if we only have three textures and this goes up to four, this says to go back to zero. And that's basically how this uh, works. A couple things to think about when you go back to Unity. So you've got to have a textures folder. I think that helps. So if you don't have one, go to assets and then right click or create folder, make a textures folder. You're going to export your textures. I Again, I find that making the texture 4,000 by 2,000 in a PNG uh, and then and then 72 DPI works pretty well. So drop those drop those textures in here. You don't have to worry about the names. Just go ahead and get them in that textures folder. And then the prefab is a sphere that we created in Studio Max with the normals flipped inside out. It also has a spherical UVW map um, applied to it. You can look at that in my other video. I went ahead and actually, in terms of the model, um, I, I did not uh, import the materials for this one because I'm generating the materials programmatically. So the mapping should be preserved, but I don't want any confusion as to where the textures or the materials are coming from because, again, I'm making those in the code. There is actually nothing in the scene right now except for the origin and the camera. Okay, That's a little bit different from the other video that I showed. But um, in my testing, I found that that works pretty reliably, just to just to make it in terms of the code. Um, and then and then, so if you're going to build this, you know, if you don't have if you don't have everything in front of you, you're going to take the session origin, uh, take the script for the sky dome texture, and drag it into here. You should already have the gesture detector created, and then drag the gesture script into there. Those are the only scripts you need. And then from origin, you're going to take the prefab sky dome, drag it in for the sky dome. And then in terms of the textures, you go to the textures folder, grab one of these textures, and you're going to drag it. And this will turn green as you grab it towards uh, my textures. And you drop it in there. And you just go, you know, whatever number you have, you drag them in there. And it'll automatically change the size of the array. And you'll see the texture is actually showing up. That's your indication that that is working uh, the way that it's supposed to. Okay? And if you compile that, you're going to get the exact effect uh, that I have in my, in my demonstration script. And that's pretty much it. You know, the only other thing you want to play with is if you go, if you don't like that effect, you can go in and take out the emission, you know, materials and things. And if you just go in and just kind of, you do two slashes, um, two forward slashes, and then you can comment out any of the of this stuff, and then go ahead and comment this out. And then you can see what the effect is just if you only have a texture. And that may that may float your boat or not. Um, I found in my experimentation that just definitely looks more realistic. Um, and so um, yeah, so that's that's what we're getting at. So again, this is you know just just a real general kind of effect. The camera does all the work in terms of you know moving your phone around. The combination of the camera and the accelerometer should make the effect realistic. If you find that when you hold your phone horizontally that it's uh or or if the aspect of your phone is different that it doesn't you know look quite right you can go ahead and change the local scale i would make it bigger just go ahead and add, just experiment with seven eight nine you know whatever if you get it too big then 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 you i think you lose some of the detail i think it looks like it's too far away sorry too close to you uh as opposed to what the proper perspective is um, but those are all things that you can try you know go ahead and try to compile it and recompile it and just kind of see again what kind of what kind of folds your boat. If you're looking for images to place in the sky dome or making your own images, you really want to be looking at what are called um, uh, spherical panoramics or spherical panorama. And you can find a lot of those on Wiki Commons and on sites like um, uh, like Flickr. Uh, but that should that should get you going. Okay. So anyway, I hope that hope that helps. I hope that's interesting to you. Uh, anyway, good luck with your sky domes and uh, have fun. Thanks. Bye.